Jesus Christ! Isha, come on, Come to Christ! Adored Saint, come to him! We entered yet to next week. April almost finished. I heard him say, if a man believes in his heart, confess with his mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, he shall be saved. You heard it a hundred times, you heard it a thousand times, and yet you didn't receive him. What does that say? The head heart. The heart colors. You don't tell me you're here, it's already. I like the Lord saying, come to him. He said, no man coming unto heaven, but through Jesus. No man coming unto the Father, but by the Son. What does that mean? It means the way that God showed us. When he came down as a savior with the son, flesh fully subjected to God alone, desiring nothing from this world but salvation of souls. Some people that were here, past and were, are not here anymore. Their time's been called. They left the earth, and now they wait on judgment. Without the blood of Jesus, the judgment throne is going to be a fearful thing. With the blood of Jesus, judgment is going to be a good thing. I heard him say, come to him. Do you want to be scared at judgment? Our Lord see. Come to him. Run to him. You are responsible for your eternal destination. God has done everything that he could do. And now it's up to you. It's up to you. The choice is yours. Choose wisely. Our Lord see. Come to him. For now the system of religion works on the earth. When Jesus comes back as the Father Yahweh, he doesn't want to know about religion. He wants to know relationship. And if you don't have relationship with him, he will say, depart from me. You evil work is iniquity. I do not know you. He said, many will say to him, Lord, Lord, and God, God, Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord. But he said, why do you call me Lord and do not what I say? How could you call me God and don't believe in the way? He said, many will say on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy, and didn't we preach, and didn't we heal? Yeah, they did the kingdom work, didn't they? But how was their heart inside to God? People love to gratify the buildings. Praise the bricks with the AC. 
sit down on the comfortable cushion and sing hallelujah and get a tickle in your soul. When you go back, you go back with your pack of demons. That church. God said, He wants you to have a relationship with Him. Jesus Christ wants relationship. He's the Abba Father. He's the Savior of your soul. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Abraham's servant said, the one who gives me a drink and the one who gives my camels a drink. She's the one. I heard the Lord sing, go and tell the people that I've already pointed out which one. You he said, the one who gives me a drink of water and the one who gives my camels a drink of water, that's the one. So this is a scenario. Abraham was looking for a wife for Isaac and his servant was dispatched to find her. Word came to the man of God. The servant was a man of God. Thinks I would eat. He has a funny email. But he, the word came to him, and he said, "The one who gives me a drink of water, and the one who gives my camels a drink of water, I'm going to choose her, for the Lord has chosen her." Now, Abraham was looking for a wife for Isaac, and they were told not to intermarry, to take it from their people. Because Jesus Christ had to come through a pure lineage. But God be God and every man a liar. God is able to use anything, anywhere, anytime. He's our on-time Father. He's our all-knowing Father. He's our all-powerful Father. And I know Him as Jesus. So, Abraham knew Him as Jesus as well. The Bible says when Abraham lifted the knife to Isaac, he rejoiced to see the day of Jesus. How could he see Jesus when Jesus didn't come yet? God had given Abraham the revelation, the love of a father to the son. Amen. That revelation is from heaven. God had given Abraham the whole vision of the cross. The Bible says, Abraham rejoice. Abraham rejoice. Get to it. Abraham rejoice. The lady prayed, man. Abraham rejoice. To see the day of Jesus Christ. Now, in the book of John, in the book of John, in John 8, Jesus said, You want to kill me, you want to stone me. Because I said, Before Abraham was, I am. I am in the Hebrew term. Y H W H Y behold the hand H Y hand H behold W eyes W nail H behold behold the hand behold the nails God had written his name as the great I am as well as the Savior in four letters. So we're back into the scenario of Abraham looking for a wife for Isaac. The Bible says that Abraham's servant, Abraham's servant,
servant had a sign to look for. I hear you, Father. Abraham's servant had a sign to look for. God had given Abraham's servant Exodus something. What was his name? Such a funny slipper. He had given his servant Achilia. Achilia? Achilles? I think it's Achilles. Is it Achilles? Abraham's servant who went to look for Rebecca. Such as he. Achilles something. Abram's servant had a sign to look for. And the sign would be the woman would give him a drink from his journey. You know, quench his thirst. And see about his camels as well. So what does this have to do with anything? The Bible says he went in search of God. And there came a beautiful maiden. And she was carrying a pitcher of water. And you know what she did? She gave him that drink of water. And she went and she fed his camels also. He said, you're the one. All right. The Lord had said in the book of Isaiah that the virgin shall conceive with a male child. And this will be the sign. And he will be called the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Holy Comforter, the Mighty Counselor. He will call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. You will call him Emmanuel because God is with us. How easy was that? God had given a son to who the Messiah or the Savior would be, just like he gave Abram's servant, the man, a sign on who the wife for Isaac was going to be. And why does God give signs? He gave a Sabbath as a sign of consecration. He gave a Sabbath as a sign that the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside. Because no man can do that by themselves. God has to convict. The Bible says that God made it a sign between his people and him. He said six days you shall labor on the seventh. You do no work in it. You, nor your wife, nor your maiden, your maid servant, your donkey, nothing. Your, ser your stranger and any gate, nobody. When God says nobody, does he mean somebody? He means nobody. When he said perpetual, which is forever, does he mean forever? He said it shall be a perpetual covenant. Forever. God gives signs. He loves to give signs. Why? Without signs, how do we know? Without signs, how would the people before what, didn't have the Holy Spirit? How would they know? So God gave signs. He gave Moses a staff in his hand and he said, Moses, go and touch the water. It's going to turn to blood. So Moses, lift your staff. Plagues are going to come on Egypt. Flies and fleas and boils and frogs and everything you could think of, including death of the firstborn. It was a sign. What would you call it else? It was a sign. God is who he says he is. He's not somebody who claims to be something and is something else. He is called faithful and true with reason. When Abram's servant went in search of Isaac's wife, he was given a sign. When the people were looking for the Messiah, Jesus Christ, they were also given a sign to look for. 
when the shepherds were in the field, it said a star was over Bethlehem. They were also given a sign. There's always signs. God loves his people to know. Amen. He loves his people to know. The devil loves people to be confused. You see, for those who don't have the Holy Spirit yet, and I say yet, because he said it shall come to pass, here's another sign. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. All, it don't matter what house you're in. All, one minute you're singing Allah, and the next minute you say, Jesus, watch God. One minute you'll be saying, Kali, and the next minute you say, Jesus, there's a switch coming. God is coming for you. He says, I'm going to take out. One from a family and two from a city. He knows which ones are his. And he's not leaving you behind. So I heard the word saying, a big sign is coming in these last days. You're going to dream dreams. You're going to prophesy. You're going to begin to see things before they happen. You're going to dream things before they happen. Religion didn't give it to you. Your Father in heaven gave it to you. And if he gave it to you, he's announcing who he is to you. For the testimony of Jesus Christ, Revelation 90.10 is a Spirit of prophecy. Without the spirit of prophecy, you can't prophesy. You can prophesy. But we don't prophesy, we prophesy. Because when Jesus speaks, he speaks. Last night I saw some kind of things coming. Not just that St. Vincent would not blow up the top. No, no, no. Lava. You know what lava is? Lava will melt everything in your past. I saw Nepal going under rebuke. I saw South Africa coming under rebuke. God says, I'm going to deal with the nations. I'm taking out my people while there's time. You've got to choose while you're alive. Satan wants to take us out. He was Satan wants to take you off before you find out that God is Jesus Christ. And he hates the preaching of the cross. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. God has given them up to blindness. Imagine you're walking your way and you think you know it all. And you say the cross is shepherdess. I know better. God is laughing at you. He's actually crying. He said the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it's the salvation of God unto men. They wanted a sign. Give us a sign, God. Show us who the Messiah is. Show us who will save our souls. He said it will come to pass. And he'd be hung on a tree for all sins. And not a bone will be broken on him. That's the Lamb of Heaven. The unblemished Lamb of Heaven. The one without sin. The one who is worthy of the glory. He's the one who came. He's the one who died for you. It was necessary. It was necessary. He loves you that much. You might love yourself that much, but Jesus loves you that much. So the Bible says that God is a loving father. He desires no man to perish, but all 
to come unto repentance. He hates the sea when a soul leaves the church and they don't have the saving blood that he himself shed. He cries. He grieves. Satan brought religion and said, if you only call on the name of Jesus, you're in trouble. But I'm here to tell you today, if you don't call upon the name of God, you're in trouble. God says, call upon the name of God and be saved. Call upon that name, Jesus. When they say Jesus, they're saying, God save me. Or God saves me. He doesn't turn away any, any, anyone who comes to him. His arms are always open. And you've been getting some signs in your life. You push it to the side and push it under your bed and close the door on it. You've been getting some signs. And you will be getting some signs. Because God is making himself known. He's making himself known in these days. Because we are in the last days. After the mass precedes the mock, it's coming. How are you going to stand without Christ? He said in your weakness, I'm strong for you. Without his strength, without the almighty God's strength, you're going to fall to your knees and bow to the beast. So this is the word of the Lord. He said there are certain things I'm doing in your life. You don't understand it. But I'm giving you simple, subtle signs. I'm gently revealing myself to you. He said, I'm gently revealing myself to you. Every single day, you hear the preaching of the name of Jesus. Every single day, you hear about the cross. God is saying, I'm knocking on the door of your heart so hard and yet so gentle. And you won't let me in. Why? For pride? Satan lost his place in heaven for pride. He lost his place in heaven for pride. And the things that you see in this world are perishing. Yeah, they're here for a time. But they are perishing. One day, God is going to say, and you already said it, the earth is a fullness. The earth and its fullness is the Lord thereof. It belongs to Him. Every single thing made on this earth, every single thing made on this earth, it belongs to God. Every single thing. And one day he's going to shake it down. Because he's a jealous father. He's a jealous God. 